greetings of the day to all of you in our previous class we discussed uh, in fact we started the discussions about space vector based discontinuous pwm techniques or what we call as space vector based bus clamping techniques <clears throat> in the last lecture we discussed uh, about space vector based uh, 120 degree clamp pwm techniques <clears throat> and we have found that by using two different sequences, clamping sequences, uh, we can clamp uh, each phase of, uh, you know, uh, each phase to either positive DC bus or to negative DC bus for 120 degrees each, depending upon which clamping sequence we are using. And I told you that the drawback of that technique, uh, uh, the drawback of 120 degree clamping sequence is that um, it results in unequal loading of the devices. That means the devices, either only top device, if uh, if your phase legs are, if the phase legs are clamped to positive DC bus, then only top devices are on for 120 degrees each, or if the phase legs are clamped to negative DC bus, then only uh, you know bottom devices are on for 120 degrees each. That is the problem with 120 degree clamp PWM technique. So therefore, instead of using 120 degree clamp PWM, we should use either continual clamp PWM or split clamp PWM, which we have already discussed, uh, you know, uh, you, uh, with triangle comparison based PWM techniques. Using space vector approach, there are certain rules that we have to follow for you know, equal loading of all the six devices during bus, bus clamping. I will write here, equal loading of all six devices, that means six switches of inverter during bus clamping. What are the rules for that? The rules are like this. Number one, if one zero state, say zero state zero or V zero is used in a given sub cycle, given sub cycle, then other zero state other zero state means state 7 must be used in sub cycle in a sub cycle 180 degrees later that means if I am using a zero state in a particular sector in one sub cycle, then it's uh, you know other null, null vector, say seven, must be used after 180 degrees. Okay, um, in a sub cycle in some other different uh, some other sector. So this will give half wave symmetry. I will write within the brackets. This gives HWS means half wave symmetry. It's one rule. Second rule is that if one zero state or one null vector, which may be say zero or seven, is used in a given sub cycle, okay, then the other, so let us say seven, say zero, then the other substate, oh, sorry, then the same, okay, this is okay, zero or seven, then, this, then the same zero state or same null vector must be used in a sub-cycle 120 degrees later. 
Mm. That means suppose I use in a particular sector, uh, my reference vector is in a particular sector and uh, null vector 0 is applied or null vector 7 is applied in a particular sub-cycle. Then after 120 degrees, the same null vector should be again applied. For example, if uh, in a particular sub-cycle, null vector 0 is used. Then after 120 degrees, again 0 should be used, not uh, 7. Okay. Similarly, if 7 is used in a particular sector in a sub-cycle, then after 120 degrees, 7 must be again used. Okay. This gives three-phase symmetry. I will write here, this gives three-phase symmetry. Okay. And the third rule is that the zero state or null vector zero state means zero switching state which also means null vector must be changed once in every 60 degrees or sector so, uh, for example, if I am using a particular, you know, zero state in one sector, after 60 degrees, say I am using zero state, zero. Then after 60 degrees, zero state, seven must be used. Then after another 60 degrees, zero state, zero must be used. Then again, after 60 degrees, seven must be used. Okay. The example is 60 degree clamp. PWM. Okay, so these are some of the rules which we have to follow while, uh, you know, um, if, you, if you want equal loading of all the six devices, fine. Now, <clears throat> 120 degree space vector based, 120 degree clamp PWM, we have seen in the previous class that results in unequal loading of the devices. So how do we achieve equal loading of the devices? So we achieve equal loading of the devices by using you know, either continual clamp PWM technique or split clamp PWM technique. In continual clamp PWM technique, first of all, we will discuss 60 degree clamp PWM. So I will write here space vector based 60 degree clamp PWM technique. We have already discussed 60 degree clamp PWM technique using triangle comparison and there you have seen that you have to inject a certain common mode signal in three sinusoidal modulating uh, reference waves. Uh, first of all, you have to generate a common mode signal, then you have to add that common mode signal um, with three sinusoidal modulating waves and that gives, that uh, modifies our modulating waves and our modulating modified modulating waves they give 60 degree clamp pwm we already know we have already discussed it in triangle comparison based 60 degree clamp pwm technique can this 60 degree clamp pwm be implemented using space vector approach also yes it can be used it can be implemented using space vector approach and in a much easier way just you have to just alter just adjust the switching sequences in each sector and that will very easily give 60 degree clamp PWM technique. Let us discuss how. For that purpose, I have to draw the space vector diagram. So this is my space vector diagram. For example, this, my, this is my active vector 1 with switching sequence plus minus minus. Okay. After 60 degrees, my I have another active vector 2 with switching sequence plus plus minus. Now these switching sequences, you should remember, are at the tip of your tongues. After, you know, another 60 degrees, we have another switch, uh, you know, active vec uh, vector 3 with switching sequence, uh, minus plus minus. After another 60 degrees, our active vector is 4 with switching sequence, minus plus plus. Then after another 60 degrees, our next switching, uh, next active vector is 5 with switching sequence, minus minus plus. Then active vector 6 appears after another 60 degrees with switching sequence plus minus plus. That's it. And we have null vectors. For example, we have 0 with switching sequence minus minus minus. This is one null vector. 
and another null vector is 7 with switching sequence plus 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 right so this is our space vector diagram before I discuss 60 degree clamp PWM technique with you, let me tell you, and I have already discussed it in details with you, that this is the positive zero crossing axis of phase R. What does that mean? That means when my reference vector, see I will have a reference vector, rotating reference vector like this. And when my reference vector is aligned al along alpha axis, that is along active vector 1, at that time, we, uh, we have seen that the phase R voltage has peak value. That means phase R voltage, VRN, it's having ma its maximum positive. We have already seen. For example, if you see, it, uh, this is the phase R voltage, VRN. And this instant represents your active vector 1 with switching sequence plus minus minus. And when my reference vector or rotating reference vector is aligned along active vector 1, at that time phase R voltage, that is VRN, is having maximum value, it's positive maximum. Okay? So that, that means uh, this corresponds to omega t equal to 90 degrees because at omega, see if this is omega t equal to 0 degree, this is omega t equal to 90 degrees because we know a sinusoidal waveform has its peak value at omega t equal to 90 degrees. So this, uh, along this active vector 1, since our phase voltage VRN is having maximum positive value, okay, so this corresponds to omega t equal to 90 degrees. So this is omega t equal to 90 degrees we have. So therefore y will be omega t equal to 0. Omega t equal to 0 will be here. This is omega t equal to 0 degree. Okay. So this is the 0 degree for phase R. So you can see this is 0 degree then 30, 30 plus 60 is 90. So this is 90. 90 plus 60 is 150, 150 plus 60 is 180. So that means if your reference vector was initially here. That will give phase voltage VRN 0. Then as it rotates, it will produce the switching sequence in such a way that your phase voltage, you know, instantaneous average value of phase voltage VRN will increase sinusoidally. And when it reaches, you know, vector 1 position, then phase voltage will have peak value. And then as it rotates further, so voltage will go on decreasing. And when it reaches this position, so it, this will be corresponding to omega t equal to 180 degrees. So this is omega t equal to 180 degrees for phase R. And then as your active vector, uh, sorry, rotating reference vector rotates further, it will generate the negative half cycle of phase R voltage. And it will have, this will be omega t equal to 270 degrees because along this active vector 4, it will have negative peak. So that corresponds to 180 plus 90 is 270 degrees. Then it rotates further. So voltage decreases and it comes back to zero. Zero means again 360 degrees. So zero degree or you can say 360 degrees and voltage becomes zero. So that means as your rotating reference vector starts rotating from here like this and comes back here, it completes one cycle of phase hour voltage, VRM. Right? So that means this axis is positive zero crossing axis of phase R voltage. So I will write here <clears throat> R phase positive zero crossing. Zc plus means zero crossing, positive zero crossing, zero degree. Okay. And when it reaches, when your reference vector is here, uske baad negative half cycle shuru ho jata hai. That means this point, so it corresponds to this. So this is negative. This point corresponds to or this axis corresponds to negative zero crossing of phase R. So I will write here again phase R negative zero crossing Zc minus. So this is the positive zero crossing of phase R. This is 90 degrees. This is 180 degree. 180 degrees means negative zero crossing of phase R. What about phase Y? <clears throat> See if your phase R uh, has omega t equal to zero here, phase Y will have you know positive zero crossing after 120 degrees 120 degrees means see this is 30 plus 60 90 90 plus 30 30 in between 90 plus 30 somewhere here 
so this is the positive zero crossing of you know phase y i will write here y phase and this is positive zero crossing of phase y positive zero crossing of phase y appears after 120 degrees of positive zero crossing of phase r this is the positive zero crossing of phase r so after 120 degrees this is 30 plus 60 90 90 plus 30 is 120 positive zero crossing of phase y will appear and then this will be negative zero crossing of phase y i will write here y phase negative zero crossing this is zero crossing plus and this is zero crossing minus this is negative zero crossing what about phase b if this is the positive zero crossing of phase y the positive zero crossing of phase b will be there after another 120 degrees so this is 30 plus 60 90 90 plus 30 let this is 30 90 plus 30 is 120 degrees So this is the positive zero crossing of B phase. I will write here B phase positive zero crossing and of, of course this will be the negative zero crossing of B phase. B phase negative zero crossing. Right? So therefore at any instant of time uh, if you know the position of your reference vector you can very easily find the status or instantaneous polarities of the voltages for example if your reference vector is here so that means <coughs> phase r here uh, this is uh, this is the negative zero crossing of phase r that means vrn will be negative it will have a negative value okay what about vy vy will have positive value and vb also will have negative value because b ka positive yahan se start hota hai if your reference vector is somewhere here at any instant of time here R phase voltage is negative. What is Y phase voltage? Uh, y phase voltage ka positive. Yeah, ha, y phase voltage is also negative. But B phase voltage is positive. Because B phase voltage ka positive zero crossing. Yeah, so, should go down. so if you know the position of reference vector at any instant of time, you can very easily find the instantaneous polarities. And of course, the values of phase voltages. And you can also find the instantaneous polarities of line voltages because the line voltages uh, and phase voltages will be 30 degrees phase shifted with respect to each other fine <clears throat> now how do we create 60 degree clamp pwm in our inverter using space vector approach for that purpose what we have to do uh, each sector i will divide into 30 degrees each so this is 30 degrees this is 30 degrees sector 1 this is my sector 1 this is sector 2 sector 2 is also divided into 30 degree intervals each 30 30 so this is sector 3 this is sector 4 this is sector 5 and finally this is sector 6 in previous class last class uh, when we were discussing 120 degree clamp pwm uh, in each sector you know we used either only uh, we use only one switching state that is either seven only or zero only when we used only seven null vector it resulted in clamping of each phase leg uh, for 120 degrees to positive dc bus and when we used only zero null vector it resulted in clamping of each phase leg to negative dc bus for 120 degrees but we don't want that we want that each phase leg should be clamped uh, to uh, you know 60 degrees positive dc bus as well as negative dc bus so that there is equal loading of the devices for that purpose let us start with sector one sector one uh, each sector has an angle of 60 degrees i have divided it, it into two equal angles 30 degrees each in first 30 degree i will start with null vector seven so let us start with seven what is the switching sequence of 7? Seven? 7 has a switching sequence of plus plus plus. Now what are the nearest three vectors? If you have to synthesize a rotating vector in sector 1 in this region, okay, uh, the nearest three, the time averaging of nearest three vectors have, have to be done. And the nearest three vectors are null vector 7, active vector 1 and active vector 2. So let us apply first null vector 7 which has a switching sequence of plus plus plus. Then 
it should be followed one or two it should be followed by two because in two it is plus plus minus two has a switching sequence of plus plus minus so there is only one switching transition so followed by two and then followed by one so one has a switching sequence of plus minus minus so this completes one sub cycle ds and then in another sub cycle you know this is seven two one in another sub cycle you have to apply in reverse order like one two seven one will be here plus minus minus then two plus plus minus and then seven plus 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 this is another sub cycle ts so let me write it in one you know line so the switching sequence is like this seven seven as a uh, switching sequence of plus 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 two two is plus plus minus one one is plus minus minus and then this completes one sub cycle ts then one two seven one is plus minus minus two is plus plus minus and seven is again plus 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 this is another sub cycle so the switching sequence you can see this is seven two one and one two seven that's it so this completes one sample right and this is equivalent to one carrier cycle if you compare it with triangle comparison based pwm technique now null vector 7 is applied for you know time interval t7 which is equal to tz of course in in this sub cycle you apply only one null vector 7 you don't apply 0 okay then active vector 2 is applied for time interval t1 active vector 2 is applied for time interval t2 in one sub cycle in another sub cycle active vector 1 is applied for time interval t2 dash active vector 2 is applied for time interval t1 dash and active vector 7 is applied for time interval t7 dash which is equal to tz dash again so you can see in this sub cycle only 7 null vector is used in next sub cycle also only 7 null vector is used we don't use 0 null vector here so therefore switching sequence is 7 to 1 1 to 7 so 7 to 1 comma 1 to 7 fine this is in this 30 degree interval in next 30 degree interval we must use another null vector 0 what is the other null vector 0 so let us use 0 so what is the switching sequence of 0 0 is a switching sequence of minus minus 1 My, sorry minus 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 so the nearest three vectors are 0 1 and 2 after 0 should I apply 1 or 2 I should apply 1 1 has because 1 has a switching sequence of plus minus minus there is only one switching transition only R phase switches from minus to plus so 0 1 then 2 and then in reverse order 2 1 0 so I can show it like this this is 0 null vector 0 this is null vector 1 and null vector 2 is plus plus minus this is in one sub cycle okay then you know uh, in reverse order it is 2 1 0 2 is again plus plus minus 1 is again plus minus minus and 0 is again minus 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 2 1 0 in another sub cycle again i will explain that uh, null vector 0 is applied for time interval t0 which is equal to tz null vector 1 is applied for time interval t1 now, uh, sorry active vector 1 is applied for time interval t1 active vector 2 is applied for time interval t2 in one sub cycle in subsequent sub cycle active vector 2 is first applied for time interval t2 dash active vector 1 is applied for time interval t1 dash and null vector 0 is again applied for time interval t0 dash which is equal to tz dash so this is this completes one sample and then it's repeated over this 30 degree interval so how many times that depends upon how many samples you take from this to this that will be of course decided by switching frequency of the inverter so therefore switching sequence in next sector i mean next 30 degree interval is 0 1 2 2 1 0 0 1 2 2 1 0 fine that completes our sector one now when we start in sector two then the rule is that you should start with same null vector which has ended in sector one so sector 1 has, has ended with uh, null vector 0. So let us use 0 again. So 0. So what in sector 2, what are the nearest 3 vectors? 0, 2, 3. After 0, I should not apply 2 because 2 has 2 switching transitions. I should apply 3. So 0, 3, then 2, 
0 null vector and active vector 3 and then active vector 2 comma 2 3 0 this is in one sub cycle this is in another sub cycle fine then in this 30 degree interval in sector 2 i have applied null vector 0 then then in other 30 degree interval i should apply null, null vector 7 so when i write 7 here so my nearest two other two vectors are 2 and 3 should i apply first 3 or 2 i should apply 2 first because 2 has a switching sequence of plus plus minus only b phase switches only one switching transition is there so 7 2 3 comma reverse in reverse order 3 2 7 fine so that completes our sector 2 and then following the same rule which we have followed while moving from sector 1 to sector 2 when we move from sector 2 to sector 3 the same null vector should be used with which we have ended in our sector 2 and what was that null vector 7 so let us use 7 first and in sector 3 what are the nearest three vectors 0 vector 3 and 4 and in the null vector we are using 7 and then we should use 4 because 4 will give rise to only one switching transition 7 4 3 comma 3 4 7 this is the switching sequence in first 30 degree interval in next 30 degree interval we should use the null vector 0 after 0 we should use 3 not 4 because in 3 there is only one switching transition only y phase switches so 0 3 4 comma 4 3 0 this is the switching sequence in sector 3 other 30 degree interval right okay now after this we have to move to sector 4 when we move to sector 4, sector 3 ended with 0, so I should start with 0. 0 and what are the other nearest vectors? 4 and 5. Then I should use 5. 0, 5. Because five, uh, 0 has a switching sequence of minus, minus, minus. 5 has a switching sequence of minus, minus, plus. Only B phase switches, only one switching transition is there. 0, 5, 4, comma. 4, 5, 0. Fine. In first 30 degree interval. In other 30 degree interval, I should use null vector 7. 7 should be followed by 4 because 7 has a switching sequence of plus plus plus. 4 has a switching sequence of minus plus plus. So only R phase switches. Only one switching transition is there. So 7, 4, 5, comma, 5, 4, 7. So this is the switching sequence. Okay. So this completes sector 4. Then we will move to sector 5. So sector 4 ended with null vector 7. Sector 5 will start with null vector 7. So what are the three nearest vectors in sector 5? Null vector, active vector 5 and active vector 6. 7 has a switching sequence of plus plus plus. Then I should use 6 because 6 has a switching sequence of plus minus plus. Only Y phase switches. Okay. So 7, 6, then 5 comma and in reverse sequence five six seven so this completes the sample and many such samples will be there over this 30 degree interval then we move to other 30 degree interval in other 30 degree interval i will start with zero zero and then i should use five because in five zero has a switching sequence of minus 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 five has a switching sequence of minus minus plus only b phase switches so zero five six comma six five zero that completes sector five then we move to last sector sector six sector six will of course that will start with zero okay so that will start with zero zero then one because one has only one switching transition r phase switches six comma in reverse order six one zero in this 30 degree interval in other 30 degree interval we should start with 7 7 then 6 because in 6 only y phase which is only one switching transition is there 7 6 1 comma 1 6 7 that completes the switching sequences so if you design your space vector in this way and these switching sequences you store in a lookup table and then you you know depending upon where your reference vector is you take out these switching sequence find the control pulses, apply those gating pulses to all the six switches of inverter, your inverter will produce sinusoidal three-phase output voltage.
okay and simultaneously your inverter will result in clamping of each phase leg for 60 degree interval right let us try to understand how clamping occurs <clears throat> let us start with sector 1 in sector 1 first 30 degree interval my switching sequence is 7 to 1 comma 1 to 7 7 means switching sequence of plus 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 2 means a switching sequence of plus plus minus and 1 means a switching sequence of plus minus minus then 1 to 7 1 is again plus minus minus 2 is again plus plus minus and 7 is again plus 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 uh, here you can see our phase is plus 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 all the way whereas y phase is plus plus here and then it is minus that means y phase switches and what about b phase b phase is plus here and minus here b phase also switches so y phase and b phase switching takes place but r phase does not switch at all because r phase has you know this status plus 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 that means the top switch of r phase will be continuously on in this switching sequence okay that means your pole voltage vro will be equal to vdc by 2 in other words since r phase has a switching has a status of plus 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 that means your r phase of the inverter or r phase of the load is clamped to positive dc bus so therefore i will write here r plus I mean, over these 30 degree intervals R phase is clamped to positive DC bus so I will write R, pl R plus fine <clears throat> what about next 30 degree interval in next 30 degree interval my switching sequence is 0 1 2 comma 2 1 0 0 means minus 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 1 means plus minus minus 2 means plus plus minus then 2 1 0 is again there plus plus minus plus minus 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 now why r phase is minus here plus here so r phase switching occurs y phase is minus here and it is plus here y phase also switches what about b phase b phase is minus here minus 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 that means b phase does not switch and minus means your b phase is clamped to negative dc so that means in sector one next 30 degree intervals b phase is clamped to negative dc bus i will write b minus b minus means that over these 30 degree interval b phase is clamped to negative dc bus okay let us continue like this now we are in uh, my reference vector is in sector number two first 30 degree interval in first 30 degree interval my switching sequence is 0 3 2 2 3 0 0 is minus 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 3 is minus plus minus and 2 is plus plus minus now we can see here y phase is plus here y phase is plus here and oh, sorry uh, b phase is minus here since i am using zero also zero has a switching sequence of minus 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 b phase is minus here when active vector 3 is applied b phase is minus with active vector 2 b phase is minus with null vector 0 b phase is minus that means b phase is again clamped to negative dc bus so i will write here b minus again so for this 30 degree interval which corresponds to sector 1 b phase is clamped to uh, negative dc bus and in sector 2 first 30 degree interval b phase is again clamped to negative dc bus okay now what about other 30 degree interval other 30 degree interval switching sequence is 7 to 3 3 to 7 7 means plus 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 is used now 3 may uh, in 3 uh, uh, y this is r y b y is plus okay when active vector 3 is applied y is plus when active vector 2 is applied y is plus when 0 vector 7 is applied y is plus again so since y is plus y is plus and y is plus so that means y phase is applied to y phase is clamped to positive dc bus so i will write y plus okay that completes our sector 2 and our reference vector then enters sector 3 
In sector 3, in first 30 degree interval, which vectors are applied? 7, 4, 3, 3, 4, 7. 7 is again plus, plus, plus. 4 is minus, plus, plus. 3 is minus, plus, minus. So here y phase is plus. When 3 is applied, y phase is plus. When 4 is applied, y phase is again plus. When 7 is applied, y phase is again plus. So y phase is again clamped for next 30 degree interval to positive DC bus. Okay. Uske baad, sector 3 mein next 30 degree interval le lije. The switching sequence is 0, 3, 4, 4, 3, 0. 0 means minus, minus, minus. 3 means minus, plus, minus. And 4 means minus, plus, plus. Okay. In this, we can see R phase is minus here. R phase is minus here. And R phase is minus here. That means R phase will be clamped to negative DC bus. And if you see, you know, uh, half wave symmetry, agar ap half, wave, half wave symmetry bhi dekhe. Just few moments back, I told you that for equal, I had written a few points for equal loading of the devices. And one of the points was that if a, a particular, uh, you know, um, null vector is applied in a subcycle in a sector, for example, here seven is applied. Then after 180 degrees, opposite null vector will be applied. So after one, ye dekhe, yaan se yaan tak 180 degrees, hai, after 180 degrees, null vector zero is applied. So here 7 is applied, here 0 is applied. This 7 causes R phase to be clamped to positive DC bus here. And this 0 causes R phase to be clamped to negative DC bus here. So this is exactly after 180 degrees. Okay. And um, this gives half wave symmetry. That means if R phase was positive here, I mean it was clamped to positive DC bus here. After 180 degrees, the R phase will be clamped to negative DC bus. This gives half wave symmetry. Then let us see what happens in next interval, next 30 degree interval, which belongs to sector 4. When my reference vector is in sector 4, first 30 degree interval, switching sequence is 0, 5, 4, 4, 5, 0. 0 means minus, minus, minus. 4 means minus, plus, plus. And 5 means minus, minus, plus. Or reverse order may be yehi apply yoga. So R phase is minus, minus, minus. So R phase is in this 30 degree interval also, R phase is clamped to negative DC bus. So it is clamped to negative DC bus. Okay. So that means for 30 plus 30, 60 degree interval, R phase is clamped to negative DC bus. What about, um, what about this? Uh, sector 4, next 30 degree interval. Now my reference vector when it is in sector 4, Next 30 degree interval, the switching sequence is 7, 4, 5, 5, 4, 7. 7 means plus, plus, plus. 4 means minus, plus, plus. And 5 means minus, minus, plus. So you can see B phase is plus, B phase is plus, B phase is plus. So this will result in clamping of B phase to positive DC bus. So this is B plus. Yeah, B plus. So for this 30 degree interval, your B phase will be clamped to positive DC bus. And what about next 30 degree interval when my reference vector is here? Switching sequence is 7, 6, 5, 5, 6, 7. 7 is again plus, plus, plus. 6 is, uh, of course, it belongs to sector 5. 6 is plus, minus, plus. And 5 is minus, minus, plus. Here again, you can see B is positive, positive, positive. So B phase is again clamped to positive DC bus for next, uh, you know, 30 degree interval. You can very clearly see this B was clamped, B phase was clamped to negative DC bus here or after 180 degrees it is clamped to positive DC bus. B phase was clamped to negative DC bus here after one, 180 degrees it is clamped to positive DC bus. So this gives half wave symmetry. And now after this, in this 30 degree interval, what will happen? In this 30 degree interval, my switching sequence, sequence is 0, 5, 6, 6, 5, 0. 0 means minus, minus, minus. 5 means minus, minus, plus. 6 means plus, minus, my, plus. So you can see y phase is minus. y is minus. y is minus here. So that means y phase is clamped to negative DC bus. So C degree pehle, yeah, y phase was uh, before 180 degrees, it was clamped to positive DC bus. So exactly after 180 degrees, it will be now clamped to negative DC bus. So this is Y minus. 
and when my reference vector is here somewhere here switching sequence is 0 1 6 6 1 0 0 is again minus 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 1 is plus minus minus 6 is plus minus plus here you can see y phase is again minus minus and minus here so y phase is again clamped to negative dc bus clamped to negative dc bus so for 30 plus 30 60 degrees my y phase is clamped to negative dc bus and finally then in sector 6 in this 30 degree interval the switching sequence is 761167 7 means plus 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 1 means plus minus minus and 6 means plus minus plus so you can now see r phase r is plus r is plus and r is plus so that means r phase is clamped to positive dc bus in this 30 degree interval and we have already seen in next 30 degree interval also it is clamped to positive dc bus so overall you can see r phase is clamped to positive dc bus for 30 plus 30 60 degrees so this is r phase is clamped to positive dc bus for 30 plus 30 60 degrees then b phase is clamped to negative dc bus for 60 degrees then y phase is clamped to positive dc bus for 30 plus 30 60 degrees then R phase is clamped to negative DC bus for 30 plus 30, 60 degrees. So this is R minus. Then B phase is clamped to positive DC bus for 30 plus 30, 60 degrees. And finally, Y phase is clamped to negative DC bus for 30 plus 30, 60 degrees. So you can see equal loading of the devices. Because in this 60 degree interval, R phase is clamped to positive DC bus. And in this 60 degree interval, R phase is clamped to negative DC bus. So when R phase is clamped to positive DC bus, top device is on. And when R phase is clamped to negative DC bus, bottom device is on for 60 degree interval. So this gives equal loading of the devices. Same is true with other phases. Now we can very interestingly see what is the, uh, you know, um, uh, period of, uh, you know, uh, clamping. We know that this is the zero crossing of R phase. We have already established R phase because it's positive zero crossing here. So then this is 30 plus 30, 60 degrees. So which, this is 60 degrees. I repeat again, this axis is zero crossing of R phase because when your reference vector is along this axis, VR is zero. Then as your reference vector moves, VR starts, phase R voltage starts rising. So then this is 30 degrees, 30 plus 30, 60 degrees. That means R phase, yahan se yahan tak R phase ki switching hoti hai. Like in 60 degrees, say 60 plus, uh, 60 plus 60 kitna hua, ye hai, uh, 120 degrees. From 60 degrees to 120 degrees, R phase does not switch. It is clamped to positive DC bus. You can very clearly see, R phase does not switch over this 60 degree interval, 30 plus 30, 60 degree interval. <coughs> Okay, so this is 30 plus 30 is 60, 60 plus 30 is 90, 90 plus 30 is 120. That means R phase is clamped to positive DC bus from 60 degrees to 120 degrees. And R phase is clamped to negative DC bus from, if this is 0, this is 180, 180 plus 60 is, 180 plus 30 is 210, 210 plus 30 is 240 degrees. 240 plus 60 is 300 degrees. R phase is clamped to negative DC bus from 240 degrees to 300 degrees. So R phase, I repeat, it's clamped to positive DC bus from 60 to 120 degrees and it is clamped to negative DC bus in the negative half cycle from 240 to 300 degrees, 60 degrees each. Now this 60, in this 60 to 120 degree interval, you can see, uh, you know, if, if uh, power factor of the load is unity, the voltage will be at its peak because, for example, here, uh, you know, uh, if you see this interval, this is the zero crossing, positive zero crossing of Y phase. Or here, Y phase, uh, phase voltage rise hona shuru ho jati hai. And what about R phase? R phase has maximum voltage here. 90, at 90 degrees and before 30 degrees and after 30 degrees also it's very close to peak value therefore current also will also if your power factor is unity over this 60 degree interval <coughs> the uh, phase or current will also be having maximum value and this is the time when you should clamp our phase to positive dc bus in positive half cycle 
and in negative half cycle the voltage from 240 to 300 degrees is going through its maximum value okay and current is also goes through its negative um, uh, goes to its negative maximum value so this is the period when you should clamp r phase to a negative dc bus so that switching power losses are reduced so we have already done this in uh, you know uh, what we call as uh, triangle comparison based method if you remember i have already discussed that with you and th these are the waveforms these waveforms we have already generated okay uh, while in module 3 you can see here this is the original modulating wave mr my mb and this is the common mode signal mcm and this common mode signal when it is added to original sinusoidal modulating waves it results in you know uh, modified modulating waves for example this mr star like this then this is my star and then this is mb star and you can see very clearly from 60 r phase gets clamped to positive dc bus in the positive half cycle from 60 to 120 degrees and in the negative half cycle it gets clamped to negative dc bus from 240 to 300 degrees Similarly, Y phase gets clamped to positive DC bus in the middle and to negative DC bus also in the middle. And B phase also gets clamped to positive DC bus in the middle and to the negative DC bus in the middle. And uh, here, how did we achieve this? We had to first of all generate this common mode signal. And I have already given you uh, the rules how to generate this common mode signal. And then we added this common mode signal to original sinusoidal modulating waves that gave us modified modulating waves like this and these resulted in 60 degree clamp PWM that is each phase leg was clamped continuously for 60 degrees in the middle of each half cycle positive half cycle as well as negative half cycle the same thing can be achieved using space vector approach like this so in the space vector approach what you have to do starting with sector one first use uh, you know um, uh, null vector 7 in first 30 degrees in next 30 degrees use null vector 1 and then the nearest three vectors is 1 and 2 then when your reference vector moves from sector 1 to sector 2 first use null vector 0 then null, null vector 7 and when you move to sector 3 use 7 first 0 this is very very easy the switching sequence is very easy once you know this switching sequence and you store this switching sequence in a lookup table in computer memory in the form of a lookup table and then you uh, generate the gating pulses of the devices and according to these switching sequences apply those gating pulses to inverter switches inverter switch will result in this type of switching sequence and it will cause clamping of r phase to positive dc bus in the positive up cycle from 60 to 120 degrees and in the negative up cycle 240 to 300 degrees same is the case with other phase legs so this is how space vector based 60 degree clamp PWM technique is used. How 60 degree clamp PWM is implemented using space vector technique. You don't have to generate any common mode signal. You don't have to add that to original modulating signal. You don't have to generate any modified modulating wave and you don't have to compare that with triangular carrier wave. By simple switching sequence like this, which is very easy to remember, store this switching sequence in lookup table and generate the gating pulses that will automatically result in 60 degree clamp pwm so this is space vector based 60 degree clamp pwm technique this 60 degree clamp pwm was achieved already in sine triangle uh, sorry in triangle comparison pwm like this we have already discussed it and this can be done using space vector approach also like this and if you compare the two implementations it is very easy to implement the 60 degree clamp using space vector approach than using triangle comparison approach because you don't have to generate any common mode signal you don't have to modify the modulating waves no triangle comparison has to take place just storing these switching sequences and generating the gating pulses will cause 60 degree clamp pwm fine <clears throat> now after this I will discuss with you space vector based SV based continual clamp PWM technique.
We have already discussed continual clamp PWM technique using triangle comparison. If you remember, <clears throat> we can implement it using space vector based approach also. Why is it called continual clamp PWM? Because each phase leg is continuously clamped to 60 degree interval. Like just few moments back, we were discussing space vector based 60 degree clamp PWM. That's also a type of continual clamp PWM technique. And in fact, that is a special case of continual clamp PWM technique. However, depending upon the load power factor, you may have to, you know, uh, change. Uh, you, you may not be required to clamp your uh, phase leg in the middle. For example, you may have to clamp phase leg, say, from 30 to 90 degrees if your load power factor is leading in each phase or you may have to clamp your phase leg from 90 to uh, you know uh, 90 plus 60 is 150 degrees if load power factor is lagging on leading power factor load clamping is done like this it's not in the middle 60 to 180 it is just from here to here and for lagging power factor load the clamping is done in the right you know uh, quarter cycle I repeat, for lagging power, for leading power factor load, uh, bus clamping is done in the first quarter, and for lagging power factor load, bus clamping is done in the next quarter. So that is, you know, continual clamp PWM technique. Let's see how we can implement this continual clamp PWM technique. We will take one case and we'll try to implement it using continual clamp PWM using space vector approach. For that purpose, I have to again draw a space vector diagram. So using space vector diagram, this is my active vector 1, with switching sequence plus minus minus. This is active vector 2, with switching sequence plus plus minus. This is active vector 3, with switching sequence minus plus minus. This is active vector 4, with switching sequence minus plus plus. This is active vector 5, with switching sequence minus minus plus. This is active vector 6 with switching sequence plus minus plus and this is null vector 0 with switching sequence minus 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 and null vector 7 with switching sequence plus plus plus. So this is the space vector diagram. Fine. <clears throat> Once we have drawn this space vector diagram, now it depends upon clamping kaha karniya. Let us suppose instead of doing clamping in the middle. We have to do clamping somewhere here. Say, I start from here. Similarly, <clears throat> just for a moment, <clears throat> let me check it. Sorry, it's not. It's like this. <clears throat> Close to this. I'll explain. Please bear with me for some time. <clears throat> Fine. Then close to this. Right. And then <coughs> this, this, and this. Just like this. Fine. So this angle is gamma. Right. So, uh, what we do uh, previously for 60 degree clamp PWM, we had divided each sector. For example, this is sector 1, this is sector 2, 
this is sector 3 this is sector 4 this is sector 5 and this is sector 6 we have, we have divided each sector into equal 30 degree intervals that was done because uh, uh, we wanted 60 degree clamp pw we wanted that each phase length should be clamped to positive or negative dc bus in the middle of you know uh, voltage in the middle but now for lagging or leading power factor load you may have to change this gamma angle so for example instead of clamping in the middle if you have to clamp you know at some other angle say in first quarter or in second quarter of half cycle then maybe something like this for example same switching sequence you have to use in sector one first this may be gamma equal to say 45 degrees let us assume gamma equal to 45 degrees so this is 45 uh, this is 60 minus 45 this will be 15 degrees so same switching sequence is to be used we start with 7 7 is plus then 2 1 comma 1 2 7 i will move now fast because you now know how to uh, how to decide about these switching sequences then in next 15 degrees start with 0 0 ke baad 1 0 1 2 2 1 0 fine then when your reference vector enters sector 2 you have to start with 0 itself because it, sector 1 ended with 0 so 0 uh, 3 2 0 3 2 comma 2 3 0 then 7 7 2 3 7 2 3 comma 3 2 7 7 3 2 comma 3 2 7 2 3 comma 3 2 7 then when you enter when your reference vector enters sector 3 you have to start with 7 7 uh, 4 7 4 3 comma 3 4 7 and then 0 here 0 uh, 0 3 4 0 3 4 comma 4 3 0 okay then your reference vector enters sector 4 you have to start with 0 0 5 4 comma 4 5 0 or next 15 degrees may you have to use 7 7 ke baad 4 7 4 5 comma 5 4 7 then your reference vector enters sector 5 45 degrees it has to start with 7 7 ke baad 5 nahi you have to use 6 because there is only one switching transition 7 6 5 comma 5 6 7 and then here you have to use 0 0 uh, 5 6 comma 6 5 0 then reference vector is in last sector sector 6 first 45 degrees you have to start with 0 0 k bar 1 0 1 6 comma 6 1 0 and then this 15 degrees you have to use 7 7 6 1 comma 1 6 7 that completes our switching sequence so let us see what happens what does it result in here switching sequence in this uh, this is uh, just a moment in this sector one the 45 degree interval say for example 45 degree interval this is 7 to switching sequence is 7 to 1, 1 to 7. 7 means plus plus plus, 2 means plus plus minus, 1 means plus minus minus. We can see R is positive, 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 and then in reverse sequence also it is positive. That means over this period, R phase is clamped to positive DC bus, but it is not clamped to positive DC bus for 30 degree interval. It is clamped to positive DC bus for larger angle, say around 45 degrees. Okay now what about this 0 1 2 0 means minus 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 1 means plus minus minus 2 means plus plus minus so b phase minus 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 in reverse sequence also it is minus that means over this th uh, 15 degree interval b phase is clamped to negative dc bus then it is 0 3 2 2 3 0 for 45 degrees in sector 2 0 is minus 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 2 is plus plus minus 3 is minus plus minus so b is minus b is minus b is minus so for this period b is again clamped to negative dc bus 
okay then for this 15 degree interval 7 to 3 3 to 7 7 is plus 2 3 see y is plus y is plus y is plus here so that means over this period y is clamped to positive dc bus and for 45 degrees again y is clamped to positive dc bus y plus okay and then 0 3 4 0 3 4 4 3 0 0 is minus 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 3 is uh, here minus plus minus and 4 is minus so r is minus 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 so r phase is clamped to negative dc bus for 15 degrees and for next 45 degrees it's clamped to negative dc bus okay then 7 4 5 5 4 7 7 so uh, b is minus here Agar of, uh, half wave symmetry link here, so b will be plus b is minus here so take half wave symmetry b will be plus you don't need to you know find the switching sequence if you find uh, you know if you know where is r plus you, after 180 degrees you can uh, make r minus for example for this period b is minus after 180 degrees b will be plus b is minus for this 15 degree into after 180 degree it will be plus so use half wave symmetry similarly here for this 15 degree period y is plus so for this period y will be minus then for 45 degrees y is again plus so it will be y will be minus again that's it and then for this 15 degree interval see r is minus so here for this period r will be plus let me use red color pen so r is plus because it is 7 6 1 7 means plus 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 6 means plus minus plus 1 means plus plus minus r is plus here r is plus here r is plus here so r is clamped to positive dc bus. so you can see now r is clamped to positive dc bus for 15 degrees plus 45 degrees so 15 plus 45 is 60 degrees r is again continuously clamped to positive dc bus but not in the middle but you know away so say uh, how much is this angle for example ye aapka zero degree hai zero ke baad ye hai 30 30 plus 45 is 75 degrees so ye angle aapka 75 degrees hai 75 degrees plus 60 is 135 degrees so therefore our phase is clamped to positive dc bus from 75 degrees to 135 degrees that means in the second quarter you know part of the second quarter and part in the first quarter that is just like this r is clamped to positive dc bus here uh, the diagram shows from 90 to 150 degrees but here i have shown from 75 to 135 degrees 75 is somewhere here 75 to 135 degrees means in the second quarter this is beneficial if your load is lagging similarly you can have clamping sequence like this you can clamp r phase in first quarter not in second quarter for that purpose instead of taking this line here you have to take this line here i leave that to you, to you as an exercise you please do that so this is continual clamp pwm why is it continual clamp pwm because you can see r phase is continuously clamped for two positive dc bus for 60 degrees and it is continuously clamped in negative dc bus for 60 degrees same is the case b phase continuously clamped in negative dc bus for 60 degrees continuously clamped to positive dc bus for 60 degrees similarly y phase is continuously clamped to positive dc bus for 60 degrees and it is continuously clamped to negative dc bus for 60 degrees this results in equal loading of the devices because each phase leg is clamped for 60 degrees to positive dc bus and for another 60 degrees to negative dc bus after 180 degrees using half wave symmetry so um, and one more thing is since r phase is clamped to positive dc bus for one uh, 60 degrees and then negative dc bus 60 degrees 60 plus 60 means 120 degrees that means for 120 degrees r phase is not switching at all at all out of a cycle of 360 degrees r phase and y phase as well as b phase they don't switch for one third of the cycle so this reduces the switching power losses by 1 by 3 so therefore your switching frequency the switching frequency becomes 2 by 3 of original switching with the effective switching frequency fs dash becomes 2 by 3 of original switching frequency in other words the switching power losses or switching 
the frequency is reduced by one third. So obviously your switching power losses will also be reduced. So that was about space vector based continual clamp PWM. Let us now quickly go to space vector based split clamp PWM. Split clamp PWM first of, first of all and in this continual clamp PWM technique, uh, 60 degree clamp PWM is a special case of continual clamp PWM technique because in uh, 60 degree clamp PWM each phase leg like is you know clamped to positive or negative DC bus in the middle of half cycle okay not in first quarter not in second quarter but in the middle itself so the 60 degree clamp PWM is special case of continual clamp PWM technique but both are uh, uh, continual clamp PWM techniques now in split clamp PWM technique 30 degree clamp PWM is a special case of split clamp PWM technique I will discuss first that with you space vector based SV based 30 degree clamp PWM 30 degree clamp PWM technique which is basically a type of split clamp PWM, a special case of split clamp PWM technique. Okay, <clears throat> let us try to understand this. Uh, for this purpose, I have to again draw space vector diagram. This is my space vector diagram. This is active vector one with switching sequence plus minus minus. Then this is active vector two with switching sequence plus plus minus. So let me complete the space vector diagram. Three. Four. Sorry. Five. And finally active vector six. And this is null vector zero. And null vector 7. That's it. Now, in split, uh, just few moments back, you saw that in continual clamp, this is, uh, let me first of all mark these sectors. This is sector 1, this is sector 2, sector 3, sector 4, sector 5, and sector 6. Just few moments back, I told you that, you know, in each sector, you know, when you divide the sector here also we will divide it into 30 degree intervals each just draw a line in going through the center of each sector that will divide each sector into equal 30 degree intervals like this fine <clears throat> few moments back when we were discussing continual clamp pwm in sector 1 we started with null vector 7 and in first interval and in second interval 0 when we are implementing space vector based split clamp pwm instead of using null vector 7 first we should start with null vector 0 okay just opposite of what we have done in continual clamp pwm technique i repeat in continual clamp pwm technique our this sector 1 was divided into two intervals maybe 30 30 or 45 15 something like that and we started with this is 7 1 2 we started with 7 2 1 1 2 7. i mean we started with null vector 7 but when we are discussing split clamp PWM technique and you want to implement split clamp PWM technique like say 30 degree clamp PWM technique using space vector approach. Start from, from sector 1. Don't start with null vector 7. Start with null vector 0. So when I start with null vector 0, 0 has a switching sequence of minus minus minus. Then my nearest three vectors are null vector, vector active vector 1 and active vector 2. After 0 I should use to vector 1 because active vector 1 has switching sequence plus minus minus so there is only one switching only phase or switches only one switching transition is there and then active vector 2 in reverse sequence 2 1 0 so 0 1 2 2 1 0 then in next 30 degree interval I should use null vector 7 
सेवन के बाद आई विल यूज टू बिकॉज सेवन हैज अ स्विचिंग सिक्वेंस ऑफ प्लस 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 टू हैज अ स्विचिंग सिक्वेंस ऑफ प्लस प्लस माइनस इट रिजल्ट इन स्विचिंग ऑफ ओनली फेज बी ओनली फेज बी ओनली वन स्विचिंग ट्रांजिशन इज गेट सो सेवन टू वन कॉमा वन टू सेवन सो दिस इज जस्ट अपोजिट ऑफ कंटिन्यूअल क्लैम पी डब्ल्यू इन कंटिन्यूअल क्लैम पी डब्ल्यू एम यू स्टार्ट विद सेवन सेवन टू वन वन टू सेवन इन फर्स्ट थर्टी डिग्री इंटरवल एंड इन नेक्स्ट थर्टी डिग्री इंटरवल जीरो वन टू वन टू जीरो इट इज जस्ट रिवर्स इन स्प्लिट क्लैम पी डब्ल्यू टेक्निक इट्स वेरी इजी टू रिमेम्बर वी स्टार्ट विद जीरो नल वैक्टर जीरो वन टू टू वन जीरो इज स्विचिंग सिक्वेंस एंड इन नेक्स्ट यू नो नेक्स्ट पार्ट ऑफ द सेक्टर वी यूज नल वैक्टर सेवन सेवन टू वन वन टू सेवन इज द स्विचिंग सिक्वेंस so that means for this 30 degree interval we will have switching sequence 0 1 2 1 2 so this will give sample so this, so depending upon the switching frequency this switching sequence is repeated maybe hundreds of times if switching switching frequency is of the order of kilohertz then in next 30 degree interval my switching sequence changes 7 2 1 1 2 7 and this switching switching sequence is uh, one sample and there may be hundreds of samples the switching sequence may be repeated hundreds of times depending upon the switching frequency so that completes sector 1 then we, we enter from sector 1 to sector 2 same rule you have to apply when you act uh, when you transition from one sector to another sector you have to start with same null vector with which sector 1 finished sector 1 ended with null vector 7 so we will start with 7 Seven ke baad, my nearest two vectors are now two and three, so I will use two because here there is only one transition, only B phase transitions. Seven two three, comma three two seven. In next thirty degree intervals, I will use zero, zero then three because three me khali Y phase switch hota, only one switching transition is there. Zero three two, comma two three zero. That completes sector two. Then my reference vector enters sector three. First thirty degree interval. Pale thirty degree interval me since sector two ended with null vector zero, it will start with null vector zero. Zero ke baad it will apply active vector three, then active vector four. Zero three four four three zero. And then in next thirty degree interval, when my reference vector is in, is in this thirty degree interval, it will use null vector seven. Seven ke baad four pale use karega because. Only one switching transition is there, and then three, seven four three comma three four seven. This is the switching sequence. Then my reference vector is in sector four, so it will start with seven itself. So seven four five comma five four seven reverse order, and then in next thirty degree interval zero ke baad five pehle, and then four zero five four four five zero five. that completes sector 4 then my reference vector enters sector 5 it will start in this 30 degree interval with zero itself zero ke baad 5 and then 6 because zero or 5 ke beech mein there is only one switching transition 0 5 6 and 6 5 0 in reverse sequence that's the switching sequence then in next 30 degree interval you have to use 7 so after 7 you don't use 5 use 6 because there is only Y phase switch is only one switching transition. Seven six five, comma reverse sequence may five six seven. That completes sector five. Now our last sector, first thirty degree interval. Use seven seven ke baad six seven six one comma one six seven, and then in this thirty degree interval use zero zero ke baad one. Pahle zero one six comma six one zero. That's all. So this switching sequence is very easy to remember. Okay, now let us see which phase gets clamped to how much degree. Let us start. Let us see this thirty degree interval. In this thirty degree interval, my switching sequence is zero one two two one zero. Zero one two means minus minus minus. One means plus minus minus. Two means plus plus minus. So reverse order may fair two plus plus minus one plus minus minus and zero minus minus minus. You can see R phase B phase is zero. Uh, sorry, minus minus. Minus, 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 minus. So B phase is all the through minus. It's not switching in this thirty degree interval. So therefore B phase is clamped to negative DC bus. I will write here B minus over this thirty degree interval, right? Uske baad 
my switching sequence for next 30 degree interval is 7 to 1, 1 to 7. 7 means plus plus plus, 2 means plus plus minus, 1 means plus minus minus, then 2, 1, 7. Plus minus minus, reverse order, plus plus minus, plus plus plus. Our phase is plus, 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 plus. Y and B phases are switching in this 30 degree interval, but R phase is not switching at all. So it, it clamps, it gets clamped to positive DC bus because of plus. So in this 30 degree interval, R phase is clamped to positive DC bus. Fine. What about in next 30 degree interval? In next 30 degree interval, the switching sequence is 7, 2, 3, 3, 2, 7. Let us take 7, 3, 7, 2, 3. 7 means plus, plus, plus. 2 means plus plus minus, 3 means minus plus minus. You can see here B phase is plus, B phase is plus, B phase is plus here also. So here B phase gets clamped to positive DC bus for 30 degree interval. So B plus I will write. What about next 30 degree interval? Switching sequence is 0, 3, 2, 2, 3, 0. 0 means minus minus minus, 3 is minus plus minus, 2 is plus plus minus. Now you can see B phase is you know, it's minus, minus, and minus here. So B phase is now clamped to negative DC bus, right? Zero, three, two. Yeah, B is minus. So it is B minus. Next 30 degree interval, switching sequence is zero, three, four, four, three, zero. Zero, three, four, three, cup. This is you know pos uh, B phase is positive then B phase is positive here also B phase is positive here also so B plus again okay let me check it I will just verify it B plus R plus B, minus, B plus B minus now there is some problem here B minus right, <coughs> right. Zero, three, four. One minute. Here switching sequence is zero three four four three zero. Zero means minus minus minus. Three means minus plus minus. Four means where is four? Yeah, minus plus plus. R is minus. R is minus. R is minus. So R phase is clamped to negative DC plus R minus. Okay. Up next 30 degree interval may they care 7 4 3 3 4 7 7 means plus 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 4 is this 3 is this uh, this may up they say they y is plus y is plus here y is plus here so y phase is clamped to positive dc plus so i will write here y plus now next 60 degree interval it's 7 4 5 5 4 7 7 is plus 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 5 kya hai? 5 hai minus minus plus 4 is minus plus plus so you can see r is plus 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 so r phase uh, sorry b this is b b is plus 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 so b phase is clamped to positive dc bus in this uh, 30 degree interval this 30 degree interval may b is clamped to positive dc bus okay in next 30 degree interval the switching sequence is 0 5 4 4 5 0 0 means minus 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 5 means minus minus plus 4 means minus plus plus now you can see r is minus r is minus r is minus so r phase is clamped to negative dc bus for this 30 degree interval so it is r minus then what about this 30 degree interval 0 5 6 6 5 0 0 is minus 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 5 is minus minus plus and 6 is plus minus plus this may have they say y is minus y is minus y is minus so y phase is clamped to negative dc bus over this 30 degree interval i will write y minus then this 30 degree interval 7 6 5 5 6 7 7 is plus 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 6 is plus minus plus and 5 is minus minus plus you can see b is plus b is plus b is plus so B phase is clamped to positive DC bus, B plus over this 30 degree interval. 
Then over this 30 degree interval, you can see the switching sequences 761, 167. Let us try to find out which phase is clamped to which bus. 761, 167. 7 is plus plus plus. 6 is plus minus plus. 1 kya hai? 1 is plus minus minus. And then reverse order may same sequence. R plus R plus R plus. So over this interval, 30 degree interval, R phase is clamped to positive DC bus. Fine. And then last 30 degree interval. 0, 1, 6, 1, 6, 1, 0, 0 is minus, 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 1 is plus, minus, minus, 6 is plus, minus, plus. Y phase is minus, 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 so Y phase is clamped to negative DC bus. That completes our clamping sequence. That completes 360 degree interval. Now, let us concentrate on R phase. You can see R phase is clamped to positive DC bus for 30 degree interval. And then to positive DC bus again for 30 degree interval in positive half cycle of phase voltage VRL. Because here se here tak positive half cycle of voltage hai. and here se here tak negative half cycle voltage ka generate hota hai. And in the negative half cycle of voltage, you can again see R phase is clamped to negative DC bus for 30 degrees and then negative DC bus for another 30 degrees, but not continuously, just split. So here you can see R phase is clamped to positive DC bus, ye dekhe, ye 0 hai. this is 0, 0 ke baad 30, 30 degrees to 30 plus 30 is 60 degrees, pahla clamp 30 to 60 degree hota hai, uske baad next clamp yahan se yahan tak hai, see this is 0, this is 30, 60, 60 plus 30 is 90, 90 plus 30 is 120 degrees, so this is 120 degrees plus 30 is 150 degrees, so therefore our phase in positive half cycle of phase voltage VRN is clamped to positive DC bus from 30 to 60 degrees and then again to positive DC bus 150 to uh, sorry 120 to 150 degrees or negative DC bus ye aap dekh lije, it's clamped to negative DC bus dekhe, ye 180 degree hai, 180 plus 30 is 210 so 210 degrees plus 30 degrees is 240 degrees uh, 240 plus 30 is 270 270 plus 30 is 300 then 300 degrees to 330 degrees so r in negative half cycle of voltage phase r voltage r phase is clamped to negative dc bus for 30 degrees from 210 degrees to 240 degrees and then it is again clamped to negative dc bus for 30 degrees from 300 degrees to 330 degrees so therefore in the positive half cycle of phase r voltage R phase is clamped from 30 to 60 degrees to positive DC bus and 120 to 150 degrees again to positive DC bus 30 plus 30 so 30 degrees here 30 degrees here in the negative half cycle of phase R voltage R phase is clamped to negative DC bus for 30 degrees each first 210 to 240 degrees then 300 to 330 degrees and the same thing we had if you remember we had achieved uh, with triangle comparison if you remember the same thing we had achieved with triangle comparison and these are the waveforms for that in triangle comparison you can see our phase this is these are our three phase sinusoidal modulating waves and this dashed line is our uh, you know it is our common mode signal when this common mode signal was added to all the three sinusoidal modulating waves it resulted in you know modified modulating waves like mr star this is mr star my star and mb star and you can very clearly see these modified modulating waves they result in clamping of each phase leg to 30 degrees each in positive half cycle as well as in negative half cycle for example sorry for example in positive half cycle this is phase r phase r is clamped to positive dc bus we can see from 30 to 60 degrees same thing was achieved using space vector pwm using these switching sequences it results in clamping of R phase to positive DC bus from 30 to 60 degrees and then 120 to 150 degrees that you can see here also this is 90 90 plus 30 is 1 to 120 to 150 degrees so R phase is clamped to positive DC bus for 30 degrees from 30 to 60 degrees and then for another 30 degrees that is 120 to 150 degrees in positive half cycle then R phase is clamped to negative DC bus from uh, 210 to 240 degrees and then uh, where am I? Yes, sorry, it's here 210 to 240 degrees and then 300 to 330 degrees. The same thing we achieved 
using space vector based approach. R phase is clamped to negative DC bus for this 30 degrees interval and for this 30 degree interval. Same is the case with other phases. Same is the case with other phases. So this is 30, this is basically split clamp PWM technique because R phase is not continuously clamped to positive DC bus for 60 degrees. It is split into 30 degree interval. It's clamped to positive DC bus for this 30 degree interval and then this 30 degree interval. And it is also clamped to negative DC bus first for 30 degree interval and then after a gap for another 30 degree interval. So this is a special case of split clamp PWM technique. Okay. So mm, therefore this is, uh, it's very easy to, you know, go for 30 degree clamp, split clamp PWM using space vector approach rather than using triangle comparison approach because in triangle comparison approach I have already told you um, it's, it's a bit complicated, it's a bit complex because you have to first generate the common mode signal. You have to then add that common mode signal to all the three modulating waveforms and then your modulating, uh, modified modulating waveforms you have to compare with high frequency triangular carrier wave that will generate the gating pulses for inverter switches and that will result in 30 degree clamp PWM. Using space vector approach, no modulating signals are required, no common mode signal is required. Just store this information in a lookup table and fetch this information for, you know, gating of the devices and it will automatically result in 30 degree clamp PWM for all the three phases. So it is very easy to implement using space vector PWM uh, than uh, what we call as uh, triangle comparison based PWM. So that was about 30 degree clamp PWM and let, let us generalize it. Let us write here now space vector based, SV based split clamp PWM technique. Which is a general case of or general form of 30 degree clamp PWM technique. In fact, 30 degree clamp PWM technique is a special case of split clamp PWM technique. Let us draw the space vector diagram again. This is active vector 1 with switching sequence plus minus minus. This is active vector 2 with switching sequence plus plus minus. So it will continue like that. Vector six, null vectors are zero and seven plus plus plus. Now let us uh, assume that we don't want thirty degree clamp. We want clamping for gamma degrees. Say something like this. This is gamma. Okay, then for this phase and similarly for this <clears throat> again, this is our sector one, this is sector two, this is sector three, this is sector four. This is sector five and this is sector six. In sector one, we have to you have to start with uh, null vector zero. So zero, I will quickly go because uh, by this time you are now familiar with how to uh, write the switching sequence. So, so zero, one, two, two, one, zero for gamma and for uh, sixty degrees plus minus gamma. This is this interval is sixty degrees minus gamma. For 60 degrees minus gamma, the switching sequence is 7, 2, 3, 3, 2, 7. Fine. Then we have 7, 2, 3, 3, 2, 
three two seven, and then here zero three two comma two three zero, then zero three four comma four three zero, and here seven four three three four seven, then seven four five five four seven, okay. Uh, then this is zero five four four five zero, <clears throat> right? Then zero five six six five zero, and then this is seven six five five six seven, and then this is seven six one. One six seven, and finally this is zero. Okay, तो नहीं किया हमने यार zero seven seven zero zero seven seven zero zero seven seven yeah this is zero one six six one zero that's it. Okay. Okay. Now you can uh, again see for uh, gamma may be say forty five degrees and this is sixty minus gamma fifteen degrees. So we are not going for thirty degree split clamp. We are having different angles. So for for example zero one two two one zero means zero is minus 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 one is this two is this. So B phase is clamped to negative DC bus. B phase is clamped to negative DC bus and over this interval, ये छोटा interval जो है पंद्रह degree का seven two three two three zero seven seven oh yes sequence is wrong this is not seven two three it is seven two one one two seven because we are in sector one. Seven two one, so this will result in clamping of R phase to positive DC bus. Okay, and then this is seven two three, seven two three. Yeah, seven two three. This is this will result in clamping of Y phase to positive DC bus, and then this is zero three two, zero three two. This is uh, this will result in zero three two. Ah, uh, this will result in clamping of B phase for negative DC bus. Okay, you can continue like that. Maybe three days earlier, we have written this sequence. Likhiti. You can use the same sequence Y plus. So this is B minus R plus Y. R plus is it B plus or Y plus? Y plus B minus. This will be R minus. This will be y plus. This will be b plus. This will be r minus. This will be y minus. This will be b plus again. This will be r plus. Or ye y minus. Okay. Now you can see phase leg. Um, I have written it. I have just copied what I had done a few moments back because the sequence does not change. Sequence remains same. Only these angles change. You can see our phase is clamped positive DC bus. Ye thirty hai thirty plus. Uh, this may be forty five. Forty five plus thirty is seventy five degrees. Or it's clamped. Ye hai thirty plus fifteen is forty five degrees to forty five plus. Ye kitna hai forty five plus. Forty-five is ninety degrees. So our phase is clamped to positive DC bus for forty-five degrees here, and it is clamped to positive DC bus only for fifteen degrees here. So forty-five plus fifteen is sixty uh, degrees. Total clamping period is sixty degrees, but they are not equal. Our phase, for example, here is clamped to positive DC bus for gamma degree. And here it is clamped to positive DC bus for 60 degrees minus gamma. For example, here if gamma is 45, what is 60 minus 45? Uh, 
that is 15 degrees. So here our phase is clamped to positive DC bus for 45 degrees. Here it is clamped to positive DC bus only for 15 degrees. It is similar to this. Similar to this, which we have already discussed uh, while using triangle comparison method. Here our phase is clamped to positive DC bus for larger periods, say 45 degrees in left quarter. And in right, right quarter, it is clamped to positive DC bus only for 15 degrees. Similarly, in negative half cycle, and same is the case with other phase lengths. So it depends upon the whether uh, the power factor of the load. The power factor of the load will decide about gamma, this angle gamma. If this gamma is 30 degrees, then it will be 30, 30 degrees each. And that is, I told you in one of the previous classes, that 30 degree clamp, which is a special case of split clamp PWM technique, that is, uh, you know, suitable for very low power factor loads, like a power factor is very close to zero. Uh, if you are inverter, you are using your inverter for as a DSTATCOM for reactive power compensation or for STATCOM applications for reactive power compensation. Okay, then there in that those cases power factor is very close to zero, and that is theta power factor angle is very close to 90 degrees, and their split clamp PWM technique is the best technique, it's most suitable technique because it clamps a particular phase leg to positive DC bus or negative DC bus for 30 degree each when the current in that phase is going through highest value, maximum value and it results in reduction, uh, you know, significant reduction in switching power losses. But if, if your power factor is not very close to zero, it may be say power factor is 0.2 or 0.3, then you may use this type of clamping. You may, your gamma may not be 30 degree. It may be like 45 degree and 15 degree, like R phase is clamped to positive DC bus in positive half cycle for 45 degrees and then for 15 degrees. Same is the case with other phases. So this completes our discussions on space vector based split clamp PWM technique. So these are all discontinuous PWM techniques. Uh, we know that in continuous uh, PWM techniques, which are uh, sinusoidal PWM techniques or, uh, you know, uh, third harmonic injection PWM techniques or uh, space vector based PWM technique um, you know you apply both null vectors you apply in a particular sub cycle we apply null vector 0 as well as null vector 7 for equal interval of times in space vector based PWM but when you have to go for you know bus clamping or discontinuous PWM technique then we have seen that uh, only one um, in a switching sequence, only one uh, null vector is applied. For example, in this 45 degrees, only null vector 0 is applied. Null vector 7 is not applied. And oh, for this 15 degrees interval, only null vector 7 is applied. Null vector 0 is not applied. So for discontinuous PWM technique or bus clamping PWM technique, space vector based bus clamping PWM techniques, only one null vector is used in a sub cycle. Okay? Whereas for continuous uh, uh, PWM technique, which is conventional space vector based PWM technique, both null vectors are used for equal intervals of time in each sub cycle. So, this therefore we have seen how we can implement bus clamping techniques, which we have already implemented using triangle comparison by generating common mode signals and adding those to uh, sinusoidal modulating waves and modifying the modulating uh, waves modified modulating waves and comparing them with triangular carrier wave, how they result in bus clamping. We have already studied that in module 3 and in module 4, we have seen how all those bus clamping techniques, whether it is continual clamp PWM technique or split clamp PWM technique, how those techniques can be implemented using space vector approach. And it is very easy to implement these bus clamping techniques or discontinuous PWM techniques using space vector approach because only these sequences have to be generated, they have to be stored as a lookup table and then the, the data has to be fetched, the control pulses have to be generated according to these switching sequences and given to IGBTs or switches of the inverter and that will automatically result in bus clamping of the inverter. You know, it may be continual clamp PWM or it may be split clamp PWM. So space vector based bus clamping techniques are easy to implement than uh, triangle comparison based uh, these bus clamping techniques. And how these switching sequences 
or generated. I have told you what is the rule and it is very easy to remember these switching sequences. So with this, I will end my today's lecture. Inshallah, in our next lecture, we'll start discussions on advanced uh, bus clamping techniques using space vector approach. Please go through this lecture and other lectures and put your queries on WhatsApp. Uh, if there are any queries, I will be pleased to uh, reply your queries. Thank you.